Look, let's be real. Knowing when altcoins are exactly going to explode is a gift that no one can actually say they have because that would require you literally being able to tell the future. But in the case of crypto and in markets in general, we have the ability to check the previous data to tell us what is very likely to happen next and of course, we just simply hedge into it. Now, I'm really excited to bring you this video because I spent days researching the information I'm going to bring you, which is why I am so confident and have personally taken a larger position in my altcoins because the data is telling us they are set to explode very soon. And matter of fact, if they don't explode soon, I'm going to give you a clear date here that tells us when the first leg up of the bull run is expected based on the last two cycles, as they always say in crypto. Things don't always tend to exactly repeat, but they come very, very close to. Matter of fact, they rhyme. So I'm going to exploit that with you all today. Stay tuned. It is going to be a very interesting one. And if you stick through right to the very end, I'm going to tell you how to actually benefit as well. Now, look, the purpose of this video is to actually teach you something new. And if you do learn something, please drop a like on the video. It really helps support my work and subscribe. So importantly, you can achieve your crypto goals. Okay, so before I get into the main premise of the video, I have to provide some context and not just context, but also a warning to all those people playing this part of the bull run lazily. For those of you who are moping around right now, not taking this seriously, maybe you're checking crypto every now and again, and you're not actually making the important decisions. I want to tell you that money is made now. It's realized. Those profits are all realized when you sell. But the actual money making happens when you buy your altcoins it doesn't happen when you see the green prices go up. That's just you waiting. And we are at a point in time right now where the Bitcoin halving is 54 days away. Now, I don't want to sit in here and make a video on why the Bitcoin halving will cause prices to pop off and why altcoins will explode because everyone can make a video on why the Bitcoin halving will make prices go up. This video dives into a metric that no one else I've so far seen has spoken about, but it is an important thing I wanted to at least say because, you know, a lot of us are expecting uh, the halving to create a moment in time when we do see a slight retracement, as you can see here on the halving two and halving three. It doesn't look like much, just a little blip on the grand scheme of things, but those dips were quite substantial. You know, if you zoom right out, they'll look small, but old coins at those points in time fell 20, 30, 40, up to like 60%. So a lot of us are waiting for that point in time, but I don't think you really should. Now, I'm not going to go over the reasons why I think you should in this video. This video, again, is going to tell you why I believe altcoins will explode here very, very soon and why you have to pay attention. Now, I want to point something out that maybe some of you new to the space don't actually know. In the last cycle, the first really big leg up in the, in the charts was due to what was called the DeFi summer, where... You know, DeFi altcoins really popped off at this point in time, but a lot of altcoins, of course, did as well. Now, I've pointed this out over here by the 1st of December 2020, which was the official DeFi summer start date, right through to the very, very end of that first leg up before we, of course, had that you know momentum crash, and then we went up again for the highest point in the market. But again, this point in time, just remember, is remembered as DeFi summer. But of course, all altcoins moved up. This point in time, that massive growth, of course, is a general move, and it's going to bring up all other altcoins as well. HBAR over here in the Web2 Layer 1 narrative moved up. Web3 Layer 1 coins like ADA moved up. Of course, DeFi altcoins pumped some of the hardest at this point in time as well. I want to point out gaming here. Of course, gaming even moved at this point in time. And we all know gaming actually pumped the very, very last out of all altcoins, which is very interesting as well. And storage, of course, moved up quite substantially, just like DeFi did. But the main premise isn't to talk about different narratives here. The premise is to tell you that we're going to have a similar first leg up in this coming cycle. And if we can locate the point in time, like just over here with DeFi Summer, then of course we do have that edge over everyone else, which is what I'm going to tell you all about today. So again, some context. In that first six months after the halving, we moved up just over a 2x. In the subsequent five months, so one month less than this point in time over here in this whole DeFi Summer area, we moved up almost a 5x. We actually 3x the growth in one less month than we did in this initial period over here. Quite insane. And to again, zoom out and apply that to current times, we are squabbling right now over small percentages. You know, some of you guys who are holding off for 
altcoins to fall maybe 20-30% if there is going to be a crash. If we kind of zoom into where we are equivalent to the last cycle, which is this point in time over here, we are literally looking at like, you know, maybe 30%, 40% increases. This is the global market cap, by the way. So we're talking about multi-billions of dollars coming into the cycle, you know, 20% drops or 30% increases. But if we just zoom back out, we have all of this still to come. A matter of fact, again, this is what I'm going to really try to locate here, because if we can kind of figure out when that momentum will shift, just like we saw back in October with that massive growth that came out of the blue, that's going to help those of us who aren't already in the market. And for those of us who are in the market, we might want to take our initial investment out, for example. There's a whole host of benefits that comes with simply being able to tell the future. And here is how we are going to quote unquote predict the future. How will altcoins explode soon? This is pretty well my findings, okay? So what you're looking at here is a chart, two basically charts overlaid. One is the global market cap. Like all of those charts I was just showing us moments ago with all these sort of lines, that is now represented in this yellow orangey color and the global market dominance, okay, excluding the top 10 altcoins, Ethereum, Cardano, uh, Bitcoin, of course, and all of those top 10 altcoins, and just seeing what the true altcoins are performing like versus the global market cap. Now, when we find this red line is above the orange line, that pretty well tells us that altcoins are taking precedence over the whole market. Technically, it's an altcoin season, right? The altcoins are really popping off versus the entire market. Now, I made a video about a month ago when these two points inverse, when they kind of flip each other, what actually happens. And typically when, of course, the red line flips the orange line, we have this sort of alt season temporarily. And when the orange line flips the red line, we do have sort of this uh, you know, more money flowing into the general market and also those top 10 coins. Now, in this case, this is again as a snapshot from the last cycle, pretty well showing you the exact same photo from over here. It's just that in this time, of course, we're looking at it through different colors. And you can still see this is DeFi summer over here. The halving happened on about 11th of May uh, 2020 here. And then we had that six months and five months huge growth. And actually, again, the point in time where DeFi summer, or as we should really know it as, when the altcoin season really actually took off with the whole market, we looked at the inverse of these two points in time right there. The inverse caused the so-called DeFi summer. But interestingly enough, the inverse happened the other way as I predicted it, right? Typically, again, uh, alt season happens when the red flips the orange, not the other way around. But I believe in this case, it was just simply because there was so much money flowing into the market. That was the reason why orange just flipped the red line. And that's why they kind of were very, very close together for this period of time. And they didn't really, you know, contract like they normally would. And this was interesting. Again, I'm calling this the flip because this is the point in time we're going to focus on where the global market cap flips the altcoin dominance right before that first leg up. You're thinking to yourself, okay, Kyle, that's one point in time. Well, here's the crazy thing. It actually happened way back in the 2016 to 2018 bull cycle as well. On the halving date over here, it took a lot longer to reach this point in time. But again, this orange light, but again, this orange line here was the market cap. And we saw once that flipped, right? Once this inversed here, what happened? We had that major leg up. Now, I understand price definitely started appreciating well before that. But again, remember, back in the 2018 cycle, this over here, what you're looking at right now, this little pump was a few billion dollars, right? There was so much less money in the market, which is why we really can't, for the most part, look at that, you know, two cycles ago as any sort of definite guarantee of, you know, market dominance or whatever in any project, because it's just, you know, superficial. Anyone could have moved the market back then. But still, if I come back to the most recent cycle, I just wanted to point out these things actually do correlate. And so we are looking for that next. But let me explain to you what we're also looking at in this case. So we understand the flip, right? The flip is when these two inverse, the global market cap surpasses the global market dominance outside the top 10 coins. But again, the halving typically over here, what I notice is that the red line actually supersedes the global market cap at the time of the halving. It actually happened back in 2018 as well. Actually, matter of fact, it just kind of really spiked up on the halving, which was interesting. Now, it's going to be interesting even more because as we'll see applying it to now, it's like, 
yeah, again, it's going to be a bit of an eye opener. But the last line I want to really point out is the cool down period, which was actually, again, when DeFi Summit concluded. But matter of fact, it was when these inverse was really that point in time. Okay, so the orange line came back down and the red line actually came up over it which again, I'm calling the cool down period here. So that again might indicate to us in this future cycle, tracking these two, when we do see the uh, orange line come beneath the red, that might indicate that we are expecting a retracement. Okay, so again, these two points are very, very important because they only touch twice at this point in the cycle. And when they did, prices, of course, did the opposite. All right, so again, the cool down is when old queen dominance flips the global market cap and a retracement ensues. So we now have some very important information to track because, again, this actually plays out the exact same with the with the cycle before. Of course, we didn't have two touches over here. We only had one, okay? We only had this red line happen once. And then, of course, we went straight to a bear market because, again, it was a different cycle back then. It was a whole different market. So it's not that viable to really look at. But, again, what I want to kind of do here is extrapolate that and have a look at the current times. What is happening right now? Well... I'm expecting us to flip. I'm expecting this red line to flip the orange because based on the last two cycles, at the time of the halving, as I've indicated here, we again had the, you know, altcoins excluding the top 10 actually be far and exceeding that of the global market cap in orange, not the other way around. And right now the orange is well and truly above. So again, when these two eventually do flip here, I believe we will have an old season. That is what happened in the past. And that I believe is what happened will happen again here. So I'm expecting these two to flip. So again, small alt season is possibly on the horizon in this case. I believe it's got about 50 days before roughly the time of the halving to happen. And if not, I think, again, the markets tend to rhyme, not exactly repeat. So I'm going to give it plus 50 more days or so from that point. So really, we have about 100 days as indicated uh, on this black line here, I believe, for a small alt season to start. And then until that first crossover from there, you know, well and truly into 2024, we can expect that first leg up to ensue. Again, what we're looking for at this point in time is for these to cross again, which would indicate that first leg up, okay? So as you can see, we right now would be waiting for that flip to happen, like we see currently here in the red line, and then that first touch would indicate a massive cycle is about to begin. So that's what I'm personally looking for myself, and I suggest you guys to do that as well. And the warning signs in the last cycle would have been this, right? This momentum down and this momentum up, that would have given you a clear indication, hey, something might be happening in this case. And before we continue, I want to say, look, if you don't understand what I just said, if that kind of didn't make much sense, let me know down below. You know, I'll look to make a more detailed video on just that if you wanted to, but I wanted to spend some time in telling you all how you can benefit from this, okay? I will most definitely keep you updated on this. You know, as this progresses, I'll be making videos and making sure you're all in the loop just as much as I do for my private community members over here. But how do we benefit from all of this, okay? Well, again, like I've said many, many times, I think the risk to reward is in our favor if we are more exposed to the market. Like I just said, an alt season is actually due here, at least based on the last two cycles. And matter of fact, we don't have much time after that inverse happens and a small alt season might start for us to, of course, then have that crossing again, roughly speaking, about five to six months after, okay? So it's all coming down to the wire. And if you've watched the channel for a period of time, you definitely know that you want to have your final positions in your big bags about June, July of this year, because you will, of course, be able to avoid capital gains tax, which means you save literally 50% of your profits from being taxed by the government, at least in most countries, okay? So again, I think roughly between 60 to 90% in the market right now is better because literally you could close your eyes and pick any old coins right now. Even if we drop 20% tomorrow, you're going to at least make 5, 10, 15, 20, 30 X, maybe depending on your coin in the market. Again, overall, remember, zoom out. We have a long way to still go, okay? And we also have a wild card I'll talk about momentarily that is going to probably give us some pretty decent gains um, overall, right? And so, of course, I think that if you are holding cash anywhere between 40% at the most up to about 10%, because I do believe you should have a little bit of cash on the side for new coins and things. And so, of course, what am I currently holding right now? Well, I'm actually holding probably a bit more cash than what I'd like. I'd like to have about maybe 20% cash, 80% in crypto. And so right now I am, like I said at the start of the video, looking to buy, buy, buy. That's simply what I'm trying to do right now. Okay, so here's what's coming. 
after we identify the flip, once these two things inverse again, and we have that moment in time like DeFi summer, we have about five months, I believe, until we have some of these narratives really pop off. And I believe in the last six months of the cycle between these two points, when we have the cool down and that final push, we will primarily, I believe, have mainly narratives that pop off from there. So if your old coin over here has had a narrative pump, right? Let's say DeFi has another DeFi summer and DeFi altcoins all pump and everyone's all excited and ecstatic about you know, DeFi protocols. Well, then I would look to probably take personally, not financial advice, of course, take my profits from my DeFi, DeFi coins here. And if my coin hasn't really pumped up or had its narrative, like let's say layer twos haven't really caught on at this point in time, then you can kind of expect it to happen over the next six to eight months from that period in time, just like we will with the coming cycle. And so it's very important to identify what narratives are. I make it my mission on this channel to break the crypto narrative and the crypto standards and actually tell you what you really have to be looking for. There's a lot of nonsense in this market, especially floating around YouTube, unfortunately. And so narratives are a very, very big part of the bull run. As you can see right here, I've ranked them all on this list. And so I forecast the only issue in this case being that the Bitcoin ETFs are now a thing and the Ethereum ETFs will soon become a thing this year as well. And why this is a problem and part of the reason why I actually think that orange line so far is exceeding the red line, aka, you know, the old coins basically, is because money has flown net positive into Bitcoin over the time. Now, we initially did have, I think, net outflows possibly thanks to Grayscale, but now it's definitely net positive. So overall, about $5.5 billion of money flowing around, and it's currently about 3.3% of the current Bitcoin supply. And at this rate, it's expected to be about 8.5% very, very soon, annualized at least anyway. So that's a quite a substantial amount of the Bitcoin supply eaten up by these guys. And again, part of the reason why I do believe that we aren't going to have this possible old season and why things might be invalidated temporarily speaking here, again, if I come up to this orange chart, it's going to provide you a bit more context as to why this doesn't really flip back over again and we don't have an official alt season because again like people rave on about all the time this path to alt season chart here where money grows to bitcoin ethereum large caps alt season is ultimately that these etf guys right these institutions these angel investors these guys who just want to buy and forget they're not going to be able to of course take that bitcoin and buy altcoins or ethereum it doesn't work like that they're pretty much buying and holding okay so that is a bit of an issue in of itself. Do I see it really changing the game? Well, a little bit. I still think people will see Bitcoin pumping and gain overall confidence in the market to sell their Bitcoin and do that waterfall. But as you guys know, I'm not a massive proponent of that uh, path to alt season chart. I do think following narratives is a much stronger idea, personally, again, speaking. And so again, we can kind of look towards the narratives to figure out what actually might come first this time around. I do think that Ultimately speaking, looking for the inverse is still definitely something to, to locate for the official alt season start here. But what's going to come first? Well, guys, I don't want to break bad news to you, but no one's a genie. And I most definitely, you know, I like to have my good share of predictions, of course, as you all know. But in terms of this, this really is a massive shot in the dark. What Alex Becker and myself both agree on is that gaming will likely still pump last. He actually came out and said that, which is pretty interesting to see. But, you know, based on the last cycle, we had storage, DeFi payments, and gaming over here. IoT meme, Oracle Layer 1s, all these projects kind of pumped, as you can see, close to each other or slightly off each other. And based on the order of all of these eight narratives, storage might actually pump first. And I do think gaming is likely to pump last. But again, no one really knows that for certain. So please, when you're looking at this sort of thing, make sure you're subscribed with the bell on. Because as this pops off, I will really be keeping you updated on everything as it progresses. And there's 227 narratives according to coin market cap. So there's a lot more that plays around than what has in the last few cycles. We even have like X ecosystem narratives now, you know, like Solana ecosystem, Injective ecosystem, Celestia ecosystem that might actually be a really big player in terms of narrative growth. And, you know, this is a very important thing to assess. Like for example, Solana might have their Solana ecosystem pump in early 2025 when their Saga 2 phone launches, okay? So again, it's anyone's real guess in this case, but what I believe is once that inverse happens, okay, like I showed you before, and we have this initial pump, this first leg up, you know, DeFi alt season, for example, I am going to be taking a much deeper look into looking at individual narratives because as we saw before, some narratives pumped way over here 
And that was their all-time high. Over here, they were way down and you wouldn't want to be selling any less than what you could have been selling, okay? So again, make sure you're subscribed. If you really want to take your investment process seriously, sign up to the private community. Everyone is loving it so far. It's my shameless plug, of course. I'm not forcing you to take a look at your own discretion. Now, guys, with that being said, thank you all for watching this video the whole way through. I apologize. I'm not too sure if you'll be able to tell or not, but my voice just randomly just left halfway through the video. So hopefully it hasn't been a hindrance. Look, if you've enjoyed the video, drop a like and I'll talk to you all soon. Take care. Bye.